मैं तो दिल्ली दिल्ली में रहता हूँ और रेडियो फीजी बहुत रेडियो फीजी रोज सुनता हूँ रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन In the news tonight, close call for Nasinu community due to landslide. Flood warning remains for Fiji group. And parents urge to monitor children. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Residents of Mbalambala Crescent in Newtown, Nasinu are living in fear after a landslide near their homes in the early hours of the morning. Worried that the houses would collapse at any time, families are preparing to move out if heavy rain continues. Venina Rakautonga reports. This was how close at least three families came to losing their lives. The landslide occurred at the very edge of their homes. We could not do anything at, at that point in time because it was late, actually early in the morning, and uh, we are just fearing about this house here. Uh, this is a squatter settlement up here, and we have been trying to call these people at around 4 a.m., but to no avail. Uh, no one came up. We are fearing that their lives are at risk. The landslide has blocked drains in the settlement, and this has led to floodwaters entering homes of some residents at the foot of the hill. Prabawati, who lives with her daughter and grandchildren, was helpless as water started to enter her house in the early hours of the morning. I am really worried. What if the landslide happens again at night? Where will we go? Even our house gets flooded and everything gets damaged and we don't even have anyone to help us. Meanwhile, flash flooding occurred in many low-lying areas in the central division today. Flooding has always been an issue for residents in River Road, Narere. The flood is always uh, on their house under the, um, like, um, they always uh, having problem to go to the work and also like they suffer like this. They can come and you know, they can go. The road alongside Waiman River has also been affected by rising waters resulting in one-way traffic. Like areas such as this, a flood alert warning remains in force for areas along the King's Road and the Central Eastern Division. Venina Rakotonga, FBC News. Fijians have been warned to take precautionary measures as heavy rain is expected to affect the Fiji group for the next few days. The Nandi Weather Office confirms the trough of low pressure over the group is expected to bring continuous rain and flooding in certain parts of the country. Koroi Tandolala reports. The Fiji Meteorological Service is closely monitoring the situation as the weather forecast is for more flooding in the coming days. And at the same time as well, we are monitoring the areas that are already been inundated. So there's a broader area that extends from uh, Nambutini all the way up towards uh, Navua and even all the way to Korvo and into the interior as well, eh? the Waindina, Wainimbuka and Wainimal River and the Waimanu River as well. So these are the places that are currently under flood warning. With these rains upon us, there will be no rest of the weary. Our frontline disaster response teams We'll be closely monitoring the movement of the general public and providing vital information to Fijians in heavily impacted areas. Please help them keep us all safe by strictly adhering to every word of their advice and directives. Fijians have been urged not to be reckless and take heed of the weather warning issued by the authorities to avoid unnecessary loss of lives. There is also a strong warning has been enforced for the last couple of days and we expect uh, strong warning to be uh, enforced for the next couple of days as well. Eh? Uh, it's currently enforced for the low waters, the Koro Sea, the Kandawe and Watira Passage and also the uh, southwest Vitilim. So mariners along these areas would expect a strong uh, uh, east to southeast winds, uh, 40 to 50 kilometers per hour. We may not be facing another cyclone, but as we've uh, tragically seen before, heavy rains can cost lives all the same. The Nandi Weather Office is advising the public to avoid venturing into flood waters and mariners have been advised to refrain from unnecessary movement. The trough of low pressure is expected to exit the group by Saturday. Koritandulala, FBC News. Parents are being urged to be extremely vigilant in supervising their children in this rainy weather. 
Education Minister Rosie Akbar says children should not be allowed to play in flooded waters and creeks. Akbar says all too often, unsupervised children have been tempted. During flash floods, and many lives have been lost due to the negligence of adults. The minister has appealed to parents to engage their children with the ministry's supplementary learning materials. She says children should stay tuned to their educational programs on Radio Fiji 1, Radio Fiji 2 and free-to-air Walesi Channel 9. The Fiji Roads Authority is advising motorists to drive cautiously amidst the wet weather conditions. Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says the heavy rain can easily result in road surface flooding. He adds their team are currently on the ground assessing the situation to determine if roads need to close during flash flooding. Moore says several roads continue to be affected in the central division due to surface flooding. Motorists are advised to avoid driving through flooded water as the depth is hard to gauge. Around 40,000 people have been directly affected by the impact of COVID-19 in tourism, while its broader flow-on effect spreads to over 150,000 Fijians. These workers are either on reduced hours, reduced salaries or rotational shifts. Pranita Prakash reports visitor arrivals between January and March 2019 reached 60,000, but this year there's only been about 28,000. The Fiji Hotel and Tourism Association has painted a bleak picture of the industry, expecting things only to get worse. Last year, from January to June, we brought in over 400,000 visitors, and in that six months, they spent here in Fiji around $1 billion, Fijian. So, in the six months comparison, we've just gone through three months. If you look at our last year's six months, we have a lot of filling up to do. According to Lockington, there are vulnerable groups within the sector who are among the hardest hit. And these people have either shut down their business or have um, closed it to the point of um, just, staying, uh, just staying alive, basically, just trying to survive. Uh, and many of these workers uh, have been sent home. One resort along Coral Coast has had to lay off 30 staff because most of their bookings have been cancelled. We will be closed since we don't have any trees. But what we are trying to do at this stage is we are trying to renovate our resort and open for business in a month's time. That's what we... Around 900,000 tourists came to Fiji last year. The industry had projected a 3% growth this year, expecting 937,000 arrivals. However, given the uncertainty on when the COVID-19 pandemic will end, hitting that target seems impossible. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Norwegian government is providing 24 scholarships to Pacific Island students to pursue the advanced study of oceans and climate change. The $6 million scholarship has been facilitated under the Norway Pacific Ocean Climate Scholarship Project. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbani Marama says the Pacific Island countries and Norway share a profound commitment to the health of our ocean. He says during the Oceans panel, he and Norway's Prime Minister lamented the lack of Pacific Ocean's experts and from that mutual concern arose the scholarship project. This new partnership from the halls of Fiji's University of the South Pacific and Norway's University of Bergen will cultivate the next generation of Pacific Island Ocean leaders, bringing together the experiences of our peoples with world-leading oceans and climate expertise. Up ahead, housing assistance requires NDMO approval and fuel price announcement tomorrow. Radio Fiji One, Nando. A 16 year old is among the 10 individuals arrested for breaching the curfew hours last night. The juvenile was arrested together with another 43 year old man who were both intoxicated and returning from a social gathering in Namaka Nandi. 
In another case, a 35-year-old man from Lamy was also arrested as he was walking back from Lautoka to Nawaka following a grog session. They are among the five people arrested in the Western Division. The Southern Division recorded one case, while the East recorded four cases. Medical teams have completed screening residents in the lockdown community of Vunivangi in Riketi, Madhuwata. FBC News understands 458 individuals from 150 households were screened by the mobile health team. The households have been on lockdown since April 16th after a 21-year-old resident tested positive for COVID-19. They will come out of lockdown early next month. The lockdown area lies along a short stretch of the Ndriketin to Nambawalu Highway, which is under 24-7 police monitoring. The Housing Ministry has already started assisting Fijians whose homes were severely damaged by Tropical Cyclone Harold. A number of people have raised queries on the process involved in accessing the Rural Housing Assistance Program. Kritika Kumar reports. Fijians whose homes were damaged during TC Herald must channel their request for government assistance through the National Disaster Management Office. What they can do is first of all they need to go to the district offices or provincial, uh, provincial administrators and, and, and simply go to them and tell them that their house was blown away and that verification will be done at that level, at district level uh, and the with the help of provincial administrators. And that will then get recorded in the NDMO listing. Only houses which are confirmed by the NDMO will be conceded by the government. The minister says verification is important because people have previously tried to take advantage of taxpayers' funds by making false declarations. People will come forward and say, even my house was damaged and they never had a house. Uh, or from a household, two people will uh, come forward and say my house was damaged. So the numbers were normally bloated. Kumar says they will also help families who earn more than the $15,000 annual income threshold but are unable to buy building materials because they live in maritime areas. Carpentry teams are also available to help those in informal settlements who can't rebuild on their own. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Fuel prices are expected to decrease soon following the massive global decrease in the price of crude oil. It fell to minus 38 US dollars a barrel last Monday, the first in history for oil prices to turn negative. The Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission says this will, in one way or another, affect the local market. Tale Matarakula with the story. New fuel prices are expected to be announced tomorrow, with all indicators pointing to a drop based on the global market. Now we're having discussions to increase the, the storage capacities of some of these companies so that we can get more storage. The commission says if suppliers are able to store fuel for more than the current 74 days, they will be better able to meet the increased demand for fuel. Abraham says the increase in storage capacity could also impact the price of fuel. Now, will this yield a, a reduction in price? Definitely it will, right? Uh, anybody will tell you it will lead to a price reduction. The quantum of the reduction, however, will depend on the price that we purchase, which is the refined uh, products. FBC News has reached out to a number of fuel importers and retailers who are expected to comment later. Talima Terpula, FBC News. Turning overseas after one month since being diagnosed with coronavirus, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has returned to Downing Street. But normality won't return to the UK for many months, with Johnson urging the British people to embrace the lockdown or risk a second wave of infection. And it's business time now with Whitney. Thanks, Jackie. In business tonight, Chamber welcomes business survey. And supermarket chain says food supply is stable. Stay with us. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Leading business, the Nandi Chamber of Commerce has endorsed an upcoming survey to assess the economic impacts of COVID-19 on businesses. 
The results of the survey by the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Tourism will be used to strategize responses, find practical solutions and short and long-term recovery processes. Chamber President Dr. Ram Raju says they are willing to assist the Ministry of International Finance Corporation in conducting the survey. Dr. Raju says Nandi is the hub of tourism and probably the worst affected. He says coupled with the loss of tourism is the losses suffered by the aviation industry. Dr. Raju highlighted that everything revolves around tourism and the tourist dollar in Nandi, but this is at a complete stop. Supermarket chain The R.B. Patel says... Sales growth across all supermarkets have been strong as customers resorted to panic buying in light of COVID-19. Board Chair Yogesh Karan says the industry is more than capable of providing more than enough food for everyone in Fiji. Karan says there has since been a moderation in shopping behaviour, but sales are low in the Western Division due to the standstill of the tourism industry. The RB Patel Group says while they are unable to forecast the net impact of COVID-19 on the financial year, they are confident of matching or suppressing last year's results. U.S. President Donald Trump says he will order meat processing plants to stay open during the pandemic. It comes amid warning that the meat shelves in the United States could go empty this week. 22 plants have closed due to the virus. At least 20 workers have died. We now join Sinifa for the latest in the money market. The U.S. dollar was on the back foot today as the slowing spread of coronavirus and moves to reopen economies supported investor mood ahead of major central bank meetings. Investors will be watching to see if the U.S. central bank gives any clues on its future policy path after it responded to the economic devastation of the COVID-19 pandemic by slashing rates, buying bonds, and backstopping credit markets. Markets are bracing for quarterly GDP, which is expected to show a 4% contraction. While other countries move cautiously towards reopening their economies, the Aussie has soared. The risk-sensitive Aussie dollar rose 0.4% to track towards a sixth straight session of gains and the currency's best month in four years, while the Kiwi dollar rose 0.6%, its highest in a week. Australian inflation accelerated to its highest in over five years last quarter. Their consumer price index rose 0.3% in the first quarter from the previous quarter, lifting annual inflation to 2.2% from one8 That was the highest reading since the third quarter of 2014 and topped forecast of 2.0%. That's all from HFC Bank for now. Vinaka. Turning to today's exchange rates as set this morning, the Fijian dollar made more gains against the Chinese yuan, US dollar, the New Zealand dollar and the euro. It fell against the Australian dollar, the PNG Kina and the Japanese yen. Onto the commodities market, crude oil strengthened to end trading at $14.34 per barrel. Gold was up slightly to $1,708 per ounce, while silver rose to $15.16 per ounce. That's it from Business Tonight. It's back to Jackie with the latest in sports. In sports tonight, Winston Hill is not retiring from boxing. And Levi Kanikonda focuses on recovery. This and more coming up. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Fiji's welterweight boxer Winston Hill will not be retiring from the sport anytime soon. His confirmation comes just months after he indicated that he will retire from the sport he failed at the Tokyo 2020 Boxing Qualifiers event in Jordan. Karatavi with the details. Winston says his emotion got the better of him when he indicated his earlier retirement. You know, with a lot of emotions um, um, revving up um, after competitions, you know, um, I was looking at different um, things that would require my attention and my energy. But my heart is still with boxing, so I'm staying with boxing um, until I retire. After failing to make it to the qualifiers, the 26-year-old has shifted his focus to his business, the Boxfit Gym in Suva. 
But I'm focusing my energy right now on growing this business and helping more people uh, become healthier, fitter, while still using box it as, uh, boxing as the backbone of that program. So therefore, I will still be competing um, on the international stage and flying our flag high. In an email response, Fiji Boxing Federation President Manasam Baravilala commended Hill for his contribution to Fiji and the Oceania region. Baravilala said due to the COVID-19 restrictions in place, they were unable to meet and review the 2020 Olympic Games qualification tournament that was held in Amman, Jordan earlier this year. Karlene Tavi, FBC Sports. Fiji Airways National Sevens playmaker Levi Kanikonda is still upbeat about being named into the 2020 Olympic squad. I have been doing my own individual training that was given by Fiji Rugby. I am working on the area that I was injured during the last test, my ankle. The doctors have not advised me on anything yet. I am still doing my own rehab, especially at work where they have provided a place for me to train. He was instrumental in helping Fiji to victory at the Gold Coast Sevens Tournament in Australia in the 2012-2013 HSBC World Seven Series. The Warriors appear to be getting closure to a scheduled departure to join the rebooted NRL season. But while there are plenty of verbal assurances, the club wants something more concrete. Coming up in the world of the weird and the wonderful, using cherry pickers to meet family during the COVID-19 crisis, Find out how after the break. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In new media tonight, Zoom classes were halted at a New Jersey school district after a hacker streamed racism and pornography in an online class. And our favorite weather lady joins us now with all the latest. Hello and welcome to this full of showers weather news. Now, I don't want to scare you away or dull your spirits because of my intro, but right now, rain is the reality. There are many risks due to these showers, flesh flooding is one and landslide is the other. Be very vigilant if you come across such situations. Now looking to the west, the low trough is still pretty active, showers will most likely be around. Taking a closer look, the temperatures remained in the low 30s. Eastwards from Pak Suva, morning showers eased up a bit but will be persistent by evening. And up north, the window for showers will remain open, the temperatures will fluctuate as well. At sea, southeast winds 45 to 55 knots, very rough seas, mariners please take heed. Now turning to the tides, high tide at 10.41pm with low tide at 4.29am sunrise at 6 19. for tomorrow showers will still linger but here's the good part it won't be as hard on us it has been as it has been for the past few days tomorrow's temps it will be in the low 30s the west will feel a little humid and looking further on to friday i wouldn't give the all clear now even though the weekend is the most anticipated time of the week well, that's all from me. I'm sure after hearing all about showers, you want to know something else. And that's why it's back to Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we ask, should people be taken to task for not following weather advisories? I think everything starts from home and parents should urge their children to follow the laws in place but if they continue to do this then it's in the hands of the police to arrest them. I think they should be taken to task because the law has been laid out and people tend to bend and break them so they should face the full brunt of the law. Uh, they are to be taken to task as well because um, anything can happen at any time uh, during cyclone seasons like this. Eh?
the world of the weird and the wonderful, an equipment company is now letting people use its cherry pickers to visit their loved ones in care homes as there are restrictions due to COVID-19. Recapping the main stories for tonight, a flood warning remains for Fiji Group. Parents urged to monitor children and tourism industry still counting the costs of COVID-19. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question we're asking, is the timing right to relax the curfew hours and resumption of domestic sea and air travel? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, this beautiful picture was sent by Edwin Wanga from the Hidden Paradise, sunset at St. Andrew's Parish, in Savarekareka. Show us what you've been up to during the lockdown and movement restrictions. Email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News, our Twitter page at FBC underscore news, or hashtag FBC News. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow, stay safe, stay warm. Good night. And I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.